Come on, Marvy, let's go party. Uh, 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 yeah. That, they only did that song um, in the credits. It was an updated version of it, too. But the Barbie movie, I finally got out to see it yesterday. Uh, because it's now been about a week, week and a half since it's been released, I'm not going to be going into major spoilers, but I'll go into a bit more in-depth detail about the film. Uh, some people have already like been talking about it, uh, some of the pl uh, struck the plot points, issues, themes, all that. But I won't go into any major spoilers. Like, I won't say how it ends or anything like that. <clears throat> but with me seeing the Barbie film, what did I think? Well, no hyper her uh, hyperbole and um, not trying to, like, uh, uh, you know, Go with the crowd. Uh, go with the crowd on it. Um, look, the Barbie movie is delightful. It's actually a pretty solid film. Uh, it's not a perfect film, though. And sorry, I'm just someone just. Uh, here we go. Um, it's not a perfect film by any stretch of the means. I did have some problems with it, but it's nothing like too drastic. Let's see if I can clean up this a bit. Uh, it's nothing terribly drastic. Yeah, that's a little better. Um, but, it, it, and it didn't really detract from the movie overall. I mean, the story is what you think. Barbie, the Barbie world is an actual world narrated by Her Helen Mirren. Uh, she explains how Barbie world, is, and they don't, they do, they do a good job in the movie of not over explaining things that don't really need to explain. Like what is Barbie world? Is it a, is it a world within your own imagination or is it a separate plane of existence? Yes. Like that's, that's the other, it's like, it's all those things. Um, it's like that small town in Sweden. <laughs> Um, but Barbie world, all the Barbies, you got President Barbie, you got uh, stereotypical Barbie, which is Margot Robbie, you've got Black Barbie, you got, uh, which they never say Black Barbie, but obviously that was a the thing. Uh, then uh, you got the Kens, uh, then they, honestly, you, you got Doctor, you got Doctor Barbie, Pilot Bobby, Astronaut Barbie, Mermaid Barbies, then you got the Kens, and you got Alan, played by Michael Sarah, and Alan's Ken's friend. Uh, there's only one Alan. Uh, plus, you got, like, Skipper and who with the pregnant Barbie. Like, ooh, we discontinued her. Um, and everything's great for them, mostly, uh, until one day Margot Robbie, but we'll just say Barbie from now on is our main Barbie. Barbie starts to feel things are off. She starts thinking about death for some reason. She starts developing cellulite. Her shower is hot, her shower is hot or cold instead of hot. She, which doesn't pour water at all. She's Her heels go flat. And so she's got a journey into the real world, followed by Ken, to figure out what's going on. And it's a, actually a pretty clever film in many ways. It set design. This may get like a set design, uh, like production design. Um, what is it? Uh, was it set uh, production design? I think it is um, a nomination because Barbie Land is is built it, like there's a reason this film does cost like 130 some odd million to make barbie land is this huge setup and stage it is huge um hell the cheapest parts were probably when they were in the real world but barbie land barbie land is it's it's very bright pink looks like you know barbie the food's made of plastic they don't actually eat or drink anything although it's in their world they are and uh, it's a it really kind of um, encapsulates the essence of like the toys. Like you have <laughs> Barbie has a narration song when she wakes up during the day, and it remind me. And I realized after the fact, it's like they're doing a commercial, like how Barbie always has her Barbie theme songs and all that. Um, but it, what I like the most about it is n no one's a bad person here. Like no one's evil. Like there is a there's a thing going around that Barbie is the villain of Barbie, and there's a layers of truth to that, but it's wrapped in other layers of not truth of of of, of inaccuracies, uh, and this is where I, was, I said I'm going to kind of go into some plot. So one of the big plot points is actually Ken, and particularly the Kens, and how they are treated in Barbie world. Kens are actually like treated pretty shitty. Like, they're not even, like, for, they're not even third-class citizens. They're pretty much hobo, good-looking hobos who you're allegedly in a relationship with that you just kick out afterwards. Um, Barbie, and Barbie, honestly, Barbie is a, not 
completely unlikable by any stretch of the means. She's very bubbly, friendly. All the Barbies are. They, they generally have a fun personality. But when it comes to how they view the Kens, they're actually not very like. They treat them very poorly. Um, there's a line in the movie, and it's uh, some of these lines are out right now. Where it, it comes after Ken says, "Like I think I think I can stay overnight." I do what? I don't actually know. Uh, well, here's the thing: I don't want you here. This isn't Ken's dream house. This is Barbie's dream house, uh, and uh, I don't need you here. And yeah, you know, it's girls' night. Every night is girls' night, and it's like she just says this so chipper and friendly without realizing that the guy she was supposed to be her boyfriend, she's just completely dissing. Like, she's not even dissing. She is just completely saying, I don't want you. I don't even like you that much. Basically is what she's saying. And that's not true. She doesn't, she doesn't hate him or anything. She is just, this is the way Barbie world works. And where the commentary gets creative is, it is a reverse reflection of our world. But our world... Going into that further is that Ken and Barbie go into the real world. Ken learns what, the pa what patriarchy is and tries to bring that into Barbie world and tries to, like, turn it into a patriarchy, only to realize that, oh, you know, patriarchies aren't that great either, and he even admits that later on. And, <laughs> and he thinks men rule the world in the real world, which, look, and I don't want to get into the whole soapbox a political anthem, you know, the sexist message, whatever this, there's people trying to make this anti-men. If you think this movie is anti-men, you're not watching the damn movie. You're seeing, you're hearing one line of dialogue from a woman who is going on a rant of why it's hard to be a woman. One piece in that dialogue you're hearing. You're seeing the treatment of the Kens and you're saying, this is anti-men. If it were truly anti-men, which I would say, if you're looking for an anti-man movie, I'm, and I'm not judging the movie, but from what I've seen, the newest um, version of the Charlie's Angels, that movie, that was a lot more anti-man. Um, if you're if you're looking for that crap, uh, but if it were really anti-man, then or men, then the Barbies wouldn't learn a lesson. Like they and for a while, this is why Barbie doesn't come off as wholly likable because for a while she just wants to go back to the status quo without realizing that the status quo is kind of the problem of the whole movie to some degree. Well, not, not exactly. It's, it's at least partly of the problem of Barbie world itself, where or Barbie land itself, where you have this disparity. And even in the real world, guess what? If you're going to try to reverse the roles, most women can find a place to live a home or something like that. The Ken's, as far as we know, are homeless. There's even a line that in the movie where they go, Hey, where do the Ken's live? It's like, you know what? I don't know. They're pretty much just good-looking bums, is homeless people. At least in you know, at least in the real world, women can find places to live. Uh, so, and to that point, the real world isn't quite our like. It's a it's a slightly amped version of our. What I mean, slightly, because you obviously get the heads of Mattel and all that who are acting completely cartoony and wild, and Will Ferrell's being uh, hilarious as usual. But obviously, just going off that, you can immediately tell it's like, okay, this isn't quite our reality. This is this is a slightly pseudoed up version of our reality, um, because you get you get a lot of guys who they're they're getting a lot of normal people, suddenly like you know, ob objectifying Ken and Barbie, all that. They go to they go to jail quickly for punching the guy in the face, then stealing <laughs> then stealing some clothes by mistake. Um, and, and yeah, they're, they're kind of upping the slightly unrealistic takes on certain, uh, on certain aspects of our world. Those aspects are there, but they're kind of amped just a bit. Like, instead of being at a standard five, they're at a six. Uh, there's one point where they're both getting hit on, and she basically says, uh, yeah, and she talks about how they just don't have any genitalia, and the guys are just like, oh, no, no, yeah, okay, that's cool. <laughs> um... So, yeah, and it's, the reason this works so well is that if it was, like, I'd go back to the anti-men thing, which some people are trying to do, some, and people who are completely insecure about their own masculinity, which is mostly, you know, guys, maybe a couple women, who are mostly insecure about their own masculinity or masculinity in general, um, is that Barbie's goal in this movie isn't necessarily to, like, do anything bad to Ken, and that honestly becomes the second plot, but it's her kind of finding herself and having the existential crisis of who she is, not just as Barbie, but as someone in general. And like, and actually having an identity beyond being Barbie. 
in the role in the role she go and the and the way she goes about that. There's the plot point of why everything that is happening to Barbie is happening, and it has to do with her connection to whoever is playing. Basically, the idea is whoever's playing with Barbie is basically funneling their emotions into Barbie. All of them, as uh, the weird Kate McKinnon Barbie says, is uh, we're all being played with at some point, and. This is probably the most likable I've ever liked Kate McKinnon. I Kate McKinnon is one of those people who I'm sure is a lovely person in real life. I've never been a big fan of their acting and their type of humor. It's like Jillian Bell. I'm not a Jillian Bell fan at all. Uh, period. That is a story. Like, I do not find her funny. In fact, I find most of the characters she plays kind of unlikable to a very large degree. But I'm sure she's a sweet arbor person. I hope she is. Otherwise, then, yo God. Um, but, one second here. Let's see if I can... I see a fly. So I'm just trying to... Nope. Ah, well. Tried. Failed. Oh, maybe not. Uh, well, we'll save it for later. Maybe he'll just stay there for now. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, no, this is the most of, like, Kate McKinnon, because the quirkiness of Kate McKinnon actually works towards a weird Barbie character. Um, but no, her goal is to meet the person who's playing with her, and she thinks she meets the person, this girl, because she gets these visions... And this is one of the other things I'm not, wasn't particularly fond of at first. So, without too much, we learn that it's not the girl, it's someone connected to the girl that's playing with the Barbie. Fine, great, okay. And, and it's kind of, you can kind of pick, uh, pinpoint on that if, you're, uh, if you watch certain scenes. But the problem here is that they don't do a good job of making the girl likable in the beginning. And what I mean by that is this. She has a, honestly, a brilliant takedown of Barbie in many ways as a person. Or as a concept, I should say. But the problem with the... First off, she goes, I think, too hard on Barbie, calling Barbie fascist. I'm like, I'm sorry. And you know what? I'm just so I'm clear on why this, why that, using that line bothers me. Uh, fascist. Okay. Fascist definition. Okay. Oops. Uh, fascism, I want fascist definition, real quick. Uh, definition, oh, uh, uh, definition, there we go. Uh, fascist, uh, far-right authoritarian, alter, oh god, alter, alter nationalistic political ideological movement. Okay, I... See, this is where the kid bothers me. Because while the takedown is pretty good, it A, comes to the fact she's actually talking to a real person here who claims to be Barbie. She doesn't believe it. So right off the gate, you're talking about Barbie and you're telling us to this person who think, who's claiming to be Barbie. So maybe you think it's not going to be that harsh. But it's brutal. The woman, Gargo Robbie goes off, Barbie goes off crying. Like just sobbing. After this girl's so vicious take, the girl, her friend group, even it says go rip her apart, and even one friend says I like playing with bars, and then she looks at her and is like never mind. Like the girl is a bitch. <laughs> like she, they never explain why she is this mean. Later on, by the way, her mother comes to get her. She go. She looks at Barbie going into the car like a car from Mattel picking her up and calls her a kind of disturbed woman. So that means then that if you, if, if you don't even believe this is Barbie, you still viciously took down and made a mentally ill woman cry. And you have no qualms about that. This kid is mean and nasty. Just apparently to be like an angsty teen with no, who, who's part of the more modern era of thinking. And, I wouldn't, and, and I not, I don't hate the character overall because they, they work, as the movie goes on, she improves and she's overall, he's likable enough. But in those like first moments, I'm like, I'm sorry, what is your problem? Uh, no, 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 no. Teenage angst is one that we all had some sort of like anger, you know, angst, whatever, just kind of angry at the world a little bit. Uh, I was like, sure, we all had that. Now, it's to varying degrees, sure. But still, it's like, you don't have the right to com to just completely eviscerate anyone. Kid, grown woman, or anything. And it tells me that you actually do this to people more often than not for no other reason than you think you're right. 
And that actually really irked me about the character. I don't like characters who have these weird superiority complexes just because they... Let me, let me put it this way. If I watch, say, House, House MD, for example, House can kind of get away with something like this. But House is actually, House still has charm, charisma, and is usually right about things. Uh, and he's saving lives. He's a gross, he's a gross. Uh, here, when you're only like 15, 13 to 15, you still haven't done any living yet. Uh, and you just think you can talk down to people that way. I'm sorry. You're eventually you're going to end up with an asshole from someone. Uh, and whether you think you it was deserved or not, I don't know something about characters like, and I've been seeing this more and it's not just, um, I'm seeing, I like, I, I don't want to say I've been seeing it only with female characters, uh, because I know I've seen it with male characters too, but like I had the same issue with like Cassie Lang and not, not to this degree, this de I liked Cassie Lang at least more than I liked this character at first. But the thing is, the character then gets better and is ultimately better than Cassie Lang. <laughs> so maybe I do like this character. But boy, I start with like Cassie Lang and uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This kind of, I've seen some things, so I've been around, so I have a better idea of what's going on than you do kind of thing. Um, uh, go to Kate Bishop from Hawkeye. Nowhere near as bad as either of those two, but this character who just thinks they're hotter shit than they kind of are. Um, if I can think of a male, some male characters real quick, where I have seen this happen too. Um, cause I, I don't want to sound like I'm being sexist or anything like that. I'm just, can I think of a male character recently who, I mean, Dom and Toretto, I've always had that problem with from uh, fast. I've always had that problem with Dom. Um, can I think of anyone recently, uh, for like as a male character, like in the last year off the top of my head, uh, Unfortunately, I I can't say that I can, and that's not for lack of trying. I am trying to rack my brains on a male character that has rubbed me the wrong way in the same way that <clears throat> this character has. Or, uh, and you know what it is? Maybe I can't think of anything because those characters ultimately got what they deserved. Maybe that's it. No one, the, the behavior isn't called out is the what it bothers me. So I've been going off and around on this. Ultimately, it comes down to Barbie has to kind of save Barbie Land from the Kens, which does go, which does result in some very hilarious hijinks, including a musical number that may very well, along with Peaches of all things, be in the nominated song category. All I know, I, I don't know if the song is named anything beyond Ken, but it's just Kens have a Ken off, a beach off, if you will, and it is just this hell great. Awesome. And it's a pretty good song, too. It's like, can and you say I'm just a friend? <laughs> By the way, I am actually dressed how they are in that song scene. Just like black t-shirts and just, I don't think they're wearing denim jeans, but I'm wearing denim. Uh, and then ultimately, how the movie ends. The movie ends in a very unique way. Um, the reconciliation of certain... Of, of certain parties, the idea that Barbie land, what Barbie land should be. And if it will ever be that way, um, the, uh, and the ultimate, um, conclusion Barbie decides to have for her story, which does lead to a hilarious end scene. <laughs> they were all sitting there well, like, what is, oh, okay, so this is happening. Okay, this is, and it just completely subverts expectations. <laughs> and I love thinking about Turner. Like, oh, man, man. This movie made me laugh quite a bit, actually. It's actually a very funny movie. What a solid message, I think. If you're not insecure enough to find the message, to at least look for a message beyond, men are bad. It's like, no, you idiots. That's not what it's saying. And you know it's not what it's saying. You just are very insecure. Huh. So that, I mean, Barbie, like, I come on Barbie. Let's go party down to the theaters. Let's go, go see Barbie. I, I recommend Barbie. Absolutely. I do. Now I was asked, uh, sometime in the week, do I think Barbie is going to hit a billion dollars? It made half a million, actually half a billion before its second week was like just within like five to seven days, like a week's time. It opened ridiculous. And it's going to have just by the numbers I'm seeing right now, a really damn good weekend. 
it's going to be number one this weekend, uh, which is what I predicted. Uh, and Oppenheimer, I think, will be on number two again if I if the numbers hold the way they are. Uh, Hunt of Nancy, I think, is going to be number three. But based on what I'm seeing, Barbie's going to make probably in the 70-ish million range, maybe, this week, weekend. 60 to 70, which, which would still be an insane drop, which means that it's already made about 29 for yesterday. Uh, if I, if I highball it at 70 right now, it's 51. We'd be looking at 600 plus whatever the international is. Do I think Barbie is going to be the double B and hit and be a billion dollar Barbie? Do I think this is going to be the billion dollar Barbie? Ooh. August is not dry for movie because it's not going to be a matter of do people go back to see it. It's going to be a matter of what else is coming out to detract people from seeing it because we're already seeing it's got fantastic legs right now. Uh, but the question is, what comes out later this week uh, in this month? We got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Mutant Mayhem. That's going to take some audiences away. Definitely, it's an animated kids film. So after that would be, I believe, uh, Go West and Jules, which I don't know either of those. Uh, I know we got the Meg 2, the Trench coming out. We got the Last Voyage of Demeter. Demeter. We got Blue Beetle. I'll give my final prediction tomorrow when the actuals come in. But right now, if you're going to tell me to put $5 on yes, no, is it going to make a billion? I'll say yes. I think it will hit a billion. Now, I don't think it's going to be the highest grossing movie of the year. Uh, it doesn't have the same type of rewatchability as a Mario does, because a Mario movie is very much made for kids, families, all that. But, and that right now stands at 1.33, 3, What's Mario at right now? Uh, 1.3, uh, 3, 4, so basically 3, 5, 1.35, 1, 1 billion, 350-ish million. It's 49, but upper 49, so 50 million. I don't see Barbie making that much. But could it hit across the billion dollar mark? Yeah. Right now, I will say it can. We'll, we'll join me tomorrow for a box office report, and we'll talk more about that. Because if if the internationals for this week come in, along with the domestic this, uh, this weekend, and if it's like only at just 700, I'm going to maybe backtrack that a bit. But if it comes in and does what I think it's going to do, it'll be over like 700, be like 750 or approaching eight. Then, yeah, I'm still going to stick with it's going to be a billion dollar film. It's not going to be the high billions, but it's definitely going to cross the billion dollar mark. I digress, though. Like I said, I had some minor complaints. Some things aren't explained enough. One or two of the characters did irk me some at the points, but they ultimately overcame uh, their odds. And... They, they do not do, I'll say this, they don't necessarily do a good job at resolving some of the issues. Honestly, like, the board members of Mattel are just kind of, that's another problem I'll actually say. The board members, while funny, of Mattel, are just there. Like, they really are just there. <laughs> they don't actually serve any real point to the plot, except for one character. One character is actually pivotal. But, and there's, so that's why Barbie has to go to Mattel, but if you take that one character out of the movie, or just have Barbie meet up with that one character somewhere else, then the whole Mattel stuff actually is completely pointless, except for humor. Anyway, I digress. So, that's my thoughts. What'd you think of Barbie if you've seen it? And if you haven't seen it, go watch Barbie. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you folks next time.